Hey y'all. It's a big day for the Willamette Charger today. I'm heading over to my buddy's uh, shop, John Fife, Fife Metal Works here in Dallas, Texas. And uh, Harriet and I are gonna go there and uh, we already dropped off all the frame rails last night, but we're putting together the frame for the Willamette Charger today. And I tell you, I have been so excited to get this thing together ever since I started drawing out this Rev2 frame. Uh, I, I've just been so excited to lay it down, trim it, and get it uh, welded together. So is Harriet. So I drew all this up in Bentec, and I sent it uh, to a guy named Jimmy Bullard in, uh, in North Carolina, just north of Charlotte. And he has been bending rails for the C10 crowd for a little while and ma makes a, a real nice uh, front clip. But I'm going to tell you something. If you've got a design or even just something just generally in mind, Jimmy's a real old school hot rodder who understands his equipment, his 4x2 uh, Bailey bender, and really understands how to get the most out of that. And so I sent him my design. He made a few tweaks to it to make sure that it could fit the, what his uh, bender is capable of. And then he bent up each of those rails, and you're gonna love this. He UPS'd them to me. And it was, it was kind of fun because each of these rails, the UPS guy loves me. And each of these rails show up, and they've all got a, they've each got a label on them. And so he wraps them and puts them together and gets them all at the, about the weight limit that a UPS guy's back can handle. <laughs> and then they show up at the shop, and I unpack them and lay them out, and that kind of brings us to where we are today. So we're not doing this in my shop, uh, mostly because I need to lean on some experience and a couple of selected tools that John and, and uh, another friend of mine, David, have over here. And so let's talk about that in order. Going over to John's shop, he's got uh, a fixture table. This is really important when you're doing frame building and chassis design is you need to build stuff on a really good flat surface. You can build it on a concrete floor, um, and my concrete floor is pretty flat but a fixture table can get you almost perfectly flat. And John's got a fixture table that's pretty darn close. But Dave has built a couple of frames before, like front stubs, rear stubs for off-road stuff and C10s. I need to lean on that experience. I can usually figure out what I need to do next on a frame. Honestly, if, you, if, you were, if we were to time lapse me, I would just be staring at the frame and just thinking and making sketches. Well, David has all those answers because he's done it before, so I'm gonna lean on his experience. And I guess where that wraps up my idea is if you're building your hot rod by yourself, you might be doing it wrong. Stuff to say uh, other than we do architectural metalwork. 
my favorite thing is like storefront, you know, steel yeah. storefront and doors and stuff. And we did that whole bar. You've yeah. done the cabana. Yeah. Like all the stuff it's out like of It's like, you know, different stuff all the time. Yeah. A little bit of woodwork, but mainly just metal work. A little bit of woodwork. Yeah, yeah. You got the whole mezzanine <laughs> up there, man. Uh, yeah. We built the mezzanine for the, to hold your camera. Yeah. Now we yeah. build chassis. Yeah. <laughs> we, watch, we watch chassis getting built. It is a good day when you get to work with friends, and there's plenty of it ahead. Now, if you're just coming into this series, do yourself a favor. Go catch up on the first two episodes of the Willamette Charger build and luxuriate in the prep and design work that landed us here. Back at the table, Dave and I measure and trim each frame piece to match the dimensions from the drawing. As a feature of his service, Jimmy provides you with a few inches of extra material on each leg to allow for minor adjustments and fine fitting. I'm going to go ahead and spoil the ending, but it's okay. As we went through this trim and fit process, we found the rails were a dead ringer to my drawing and required really no significant changes. So we just trimmed and fit it all together as designed. I'm not going to call this easy, but it definitely went as much to plan as it could have. just always like to go back to it and verify width here to here 62 we're starting at the center section of the frame because it's the most intricate part of the overall design and it has some key index points for the front and rear rail sections also i really like to tackle the hardest tasks early on in a project if at all possible This cross member's got to go in between, um, and it's 25 and a half on each side. I was just going to cut this in half and then go get some of my scrap and and weld it weld it back together. Okay. So that I don't have to I don't, I don't have to cut and section this back at home. Yes. But you have a better idea. Yes. So what we can do is we can lay out where our two cuts would be, cut with the bandsaw 90% of the way down and then put two tack welds on it so it stays as one piece, mm -hmm. but then it's easy to cut later. And then put the cuts on the bottom so that I have access to it on the top and I can just finish it out at home? Yes, sir. That's better. So you don't have to lay on your back with a cut off the That's uh, not see, fun. See, what I, what I was, uh, when I was driving over here, yeah. I'm talking about you need people who are smarter than you about this stuff, who have done it before, because what I'll do is either make the mistake yeah. or I'll have to sit there and stare at it and spend a lot of time trying to figure it out and, wow. But if you've got people who have done this before, you can just, you well, can just shut up and listen. Fabrication is just solving the problem, and there's yeah. more than one way to solve the problem. 58, right? Yes, sir. 20, 60, 62 minus 4. Go ahead and lay out I really like that somebody uh, just did this all in round numbers. We ought to drew this out. Well, did it... Was it just happened to work out that the car was the right dimension? 60, say the car is 62 and a quarter, rocker to rocker. Okay. Two so. pieces of 14 gauge roughly add up to just a fuzz over an eighth inch. Some fella at uh, Mopar just happened to make oh, it yeah. easy back in the day for you. Some fella at Mopar, that's right. <laughs> And just like that, with these three pieces trimmed and carefully laid out, 
we have pretty much locked in the basic dimensions of the frame. Yeah, square and also vertical. Pretty square. I'm square. I'm yeah, vertical. vertical I'm not square. Watch out for bow in the tubing as well, because a lot of times you got a, a radius. Things were going well, and we were working in a good rhythm. The frame was building itself, and we barely looked up to know anything about the time. Those first three frame sections, set perfectly parallel and perpendicular, using stops in the fixture table, act as reference lines, and a big T-square helps us locate and fix the center frame sections. Once you locate those, it's really just a bunch of trimming and fitting. Personally, I like to cut just outside of my scribed line and use a disc sander or grinder to dial in the exact dimension. It might not look like it, but each assembly point is actually fairly straightforward. And since the bends are faithful renderings from the drawing, it is the drawing itself that directs the build process. This is where all that time spent measuring the car, transferring data points to CAD, and double and triple checking, and quite frankly, some really great collaboration from Jimmy himself, is paying dividends. That might be a 30 second off. Oh, are you kidding? It's maybe a 30 second shot. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, that's really good. I like it. I do too. I'm, I'm getting, I'm happy with this. Tackity, 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 tackity. There is that moment when what up to now has existed only in your imagination first takes shape before you. You are rewarded with a glimpse into the future. And as quickly as you first noticed that formerly empty space now filled with the results of your hard work, the moment passes and it's gone. The most entertaining thing ever when he got that blower, his two little, I call them the assholes, his dogs. What'd you call them? The assholes. No, 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 before that, you like the mongrels? The hellhounds. Hellhounds. I have many names for them. They're little shit bags. Yeah. That's the best way to describe them. So Catherine sent him snacks up here and bought him like the Costco sized tub of cheese balls. Yeah. And I dropped the cheese ball down in there and go thump and shoot it across the shop and they would chase him. Oh. And entertain me for hours. Yeah, that's fun. And then I hit one of them in the eye accidentally yeah, and they wouldn't chase him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>